Hi everyone, my name is Nitin and welcome back to PSD Science and today I'll be going through the electrical system. So let's get started. Okay, so for the first segment of this video, I'll be going through what is electricity. Okay? So what is electricity? So electricity is an important source of energy and electricity can do things like lighting up a lamp, heating water in an electric kettle, okay? And we cannot see electricity, but we can see what it can do, okay? So this means that uh, we can't actually see electricity, but we can see uh, the, the effects of electricity like lighting up a lamp, heating up water, and there are a lot of uses of electricity like heating, like just now, heating up a lamp, uh, sorry, heating up an electric kettle of water, uh, cooking like the induction stove, so you can use it to cook, uh, cooling like the freezer, producing light like the lamp, and sounds like your headphones and pictures and many more, okay? So these are some of the uses for electricity and there are a lot more, okay? So now let's move on. Okay, for the second segment of this video, I'll be going through what do we need to make an electric circuit. Okay, what do we need to make an electric circuit? Okay, so we need a battery. Okay, so the battery is basically the source of energy. And you need to know something. The battery has two sides. One is a positive side and one is the negative side. Okay, and you always have to remember so the positive side is the one with this thing over here is the one with the extension and the negative side is the one which is smooth and has and doesn't have an extension okay so you need to know this okay next is the light bulb so the light bulb actually determines if electricity is flowing through the circuit or not okay so uh if the light bulb doesn't light up it means that no uh that it means that electricity is not flowing through the circuit. And if it lights up, it means that electricity is flowing through the circuit. Okay? Next. So, uh, this thing over here is actually the wire. Okay? The wire actually allows electricity to flow from one part to another part on the circuit. In the circuit. Okay? And next, we have the switch. Okay, the switch basically controls the flow of electricity in the circuit. So this means that if we open the switch, uh, electricity can't flow through the circuit. And if we close the switch, electricity will f flow through the circuit. And you know why? Because when we open the switch, there's actually N. So basically, if this was the switch, right, and it is open now, basically we have an open circuit which means that there is a gap in the circuit. So that's a gap. And if we close the switch, there will actually be a closed circuit and thus electricity can, plus, uh, can flow through. So these are basically the parts that we need to make an electric circuit. And I've already explained to you the functions of them. Okay? So now let's move on. Okay, for the third segment of this video, I'm going to show you the cross section of the bulb, okay? So, let's take a look at the cross section of the bulb. Okay, so the cross section of a bulb. So, this is the bulb, okay? So, let me just uh, write down the parts that you need to know for the bulb. So, first, we have the glass casing. Okay, let me just highlight where the glass casing is in case you don't know. So you see this part? So this part is basically the glass casing. So let me erase it. Okay, now next we have the filament. Filament. Okay. Okay, this filament is usually made out of tungsten. Okay. Next, we have the metal casing. Metal casing. Okay. And lastly, we have the metal tip.
Okay, so uh, basically you need to know how the light bulb actually lights up. So, so imagine uh, this these two lines as the wires, okay? Okay, so when electricity flows through the wires into the into the light bulb, okay? So the light bulb, right? You see these wires? They are actually connected. So this one goes to the the metal tip, and this one goes to the metal casing. So see this part over here this is actually the wire as well so this wire is actually connecting to the metal tip or uh, metal casing this wire connects onto the metal tip and the external wires come in over here okay maybe it's a little hard for you guys to see maybe let me uh, draw it in another color okay so let me draw it in another color and you guys will be able to see it okay so basically the wires over here they are connecting to the metal casing and the metal tip so basically the wires from outside need to connect to the metal casing and the wires need to connect to the metal tip so for the light bulb to light up you must connect one wire to the metal casing and one wire to the metal tip and basically you know what happens you know when the electricity flows through right so let me do it with the highlighter so when the electricity flows through it goes through the filament okay and and goes around again and it's basically a cycle okay and basically um and basically right this filament over here will actually heat up from all the all the electricity and it will start to glow and this glowing is actually where the light is produced okay so this is uh, how the electricity actually produces light over here so electricity produces light because the filament actually uh, glows from the electricity which is coming from the wires over here okay and and always 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 remember to connect one wire to the metal casing and one wire to the metal tip if not it will be an open circuit and the and the and the light bulb would not actually light up so if the wire actually right so if the wire over here was not connected to the metal tip but was connected to the metal casing okay then there are two wires which are connected to the metal casing right that means that this light bulb would not light up okay so you need to know this Okay, so I hope you understood that. Now let's move on. Okay, for the fourth segment of this video, uh, they're asking us what is a circuit diagram. So a circuit diagram is basically uh, when all the parts are represented in symbols. Okay. So the different parts of an electric circuit can be represented by different symbols. So like the battery over here, one battery is basically like this, okay? And remember, you need to know the position of the battery, like positive and negative. So positive over here and negative over here. So this long line is actually positive. And this short line is actually negative. So you need to know this. So when you're drawing, uh, when you're drawing uh, the symbol, you need to know which side is positive and which side is negative in order to draw it. Okay, so basically, right, the positive side is basically the long line and the negative is basically the short line. Okay, if they switch the alignment of the battery to this, if they switch positive to be here and negative to be here, the line should actually go in the opposite direction. So, you know that the positive is the longer line, right, and the negative is the shorter line. So shorter line first and then longer line so this will actually be negative and positive okay so i hope you understood that and when it's two batteries you just need to draw an extra set so it's basically this plus another set just right beside it okay so i hope you understand that now for the light bulb in the bulb holder so usually when you, when they are testing us an exam right 
they'll usually draw the light bulb in the bulb holder but they also draw the normal light bulb and I, I hope you have went to a science lab before and in the science lab you actually uh, use this kind of light bulbs so light bulb in a bulb holder and basically how you represent this light bulb in a bulb holder is basically you draw one circle and there's an X in the middle so this is basically the light bulb in a bulb holder and then these two extra lines are actually the wires which are connecting okay I forgot to say the wire is basically just one straight line okay so the wires are just basically any any lines okay okay so this is the light bulb in a bulb holder next the open switch and the closed switch so the open switch is actually represented by this and this and we need to draw a line upwards and this line should not touch the next dot okay and the closed switch is basically this dot and this dot where the line actually connects both of them so how do we draw so how do we draw it we just need to draw one dot over here and one dot over here and like that that's an open switch one dot over here one dot over here connect it and this is a closed switch so I hope you understood that now let's move on so you see this right this is actually a circuit represented by these symbols and as you can see the battery there's basically two batteries here so let me let me show you so you know that the long one is positive and the short one is negative and so it's going in a positive uh, negative direction okay next as you can see the wires are actually connecting over here and this ensures a closed circuit but is this circuit closed or open closed or open you, you tell me is this circuit a closed or an open circuit okay so your time's up so this circuit is actually an open circuit you know why because of the switch over here this switch is an open switch and since there is a gap in the circuit there's basically an open circuit and if this switch were to be closed so if this switch was not like this and if it was closed it will be a closed circuit and when when there's an open circuit right the light bulb won't light up when there's an open circuit and when there's a closed circuit it will actually light up and this is how you can know that the light bulb actually determines whether the circuit is open or closed so if the light bulb lights up it's an closed circuit and if the light bulbs uh, does not light up it's an open circuit okay so you need to know that okay so I, I think you understand now let's move on oh yeah well one last thing when you're drawing wires right you actually need to connect it until the very edge if the wires were connected like this so if you have a light bulb here and the wires are like see if the wires are connected like this with a gap it's actually wrong because it will be an open circuit okay so I hope you understand that now let's move on okay for the fifth segment of this video I'm gonna go through electrical conductors versus electrical insulators okay so electrical conductors okay and insulators of electricity so what is the conductor of electricity so a conductor of electricity is basically materials that allow electric current to flow through them and the when conductors of electricity are placed in an electric circuit there is a closed circuit allowing the electricity uh, sorry allowing the electric current to pass through the bulb for the bulb to light up okay an insulator of electricity is basically a material that does not allow electric current to flow through so it does not allow 
electric current and this allows electric current okay conductors and insulators and insulators are also uh, when insulators of electricity are placed in an electric circuit okay there is an open circuit and for conductors of electricity there's a closed circuit and this actually prevents for the insulators this actually prevents the electric current from passing through the bulb causing it to remain unlit and and it is not like this in the conductors right because the conductors actually allow the electric current to pass through the bulb for the bulb to light up okay so uh, let me show you what they are actually meaning for this part over here okay so basically we have a circuit here so I have a battery over here so I'm going to draw a circuit with just one light bulb so this is a light bulb here and you see this box over here which is shaded this box actually is the conductor or the insulator so this actually determines whether the light bulb lights up or not so if it was a conductor like metals all metals are conductors of electricity a uh, copper silver iron mercury so mercury is basically a metal in liquid state at room temperature so all these metals are actually conductors of electricity and it will allow the light bulb to light up because electric current actually passes through it and some non-metals are also uh, uh, conductors of electricity like salt solution tap water mineral water and carbon so carbon is basically found in pencil lead okay so all of these things actually allow the electricity to flow through this circuit okay so it allows the electric current to flow through this circuit in order for the light bulb to light up okay so for insulators so most non-metals are insulators basically like plastic rubber glass wood so if any of this were to be here the light bulb won't light up because there is there is an open circuit as no electric current can flow through causing the light bulb to to remain unlit okay and also another one pure water is actually an insulator of electricity as well so if pure water to be here the same thing would happen basically the light bulb won't light up okay so i hope you understood that now let's move on okay for the sixth segment of this video i'm gonna go through series versus parallel circuit okay okay so this is a series versus parallel okay so the series so for the arrangement of bulbs there's two one being series and one being parallel so in series there's only one pathway of electricity that can flow through the bulbs while in parallel there is more than one pathway in the circuit that electricity can flow through the bulbs so let me show you so first in series versus parallel we have the addition of bulbs so in series circuit if we add a bulb in series basically there will be less electric current flowing through each bulb and thus the bulb shines dimmer okay so the bulb is actually dimmer and why is that so it's because if the battery is actually 2 volts uh, this this bulb will be 2 volts as well because this is a this is one pathway right and this if the battery is 2 volts here as well but there's two batteries so in series circuit uh, you actually need to share the electricity produced by the battery so basically each each bulb will get one volt of electricity uh, sorry uh, yeah and thus the bulbs will shine dimmer than the two volt over here than the first one understand so that's why it is so so less electric current flows through each bulb and thus the bulb shines demo okay so 
For the parallel circuit, when the bulbs are added in parallel, it basically means that there is more than one pathway. Okay, let me show you what do I mean by more than one pathway. So, if this is one pathway over here, then there should be another pathway, right? So this will be the second pathway. So there's actually two uh, circuits in one. So, so basically, if this, if this um, battery is basically a two volt battery, this uh, this is one circuit, right? So this bulb will actually be two volts as well. And this is another circuit, right? It's another pathway, right? So this bulb will actually be two volts. And thus, it does not actually need to share the battery. So it does not need to share the battery's electricity. And also, there's a disadvantage in this. The lifespan of the batteries, the life span of the battery will decrease. So basically the battery won't last uh, that long. While in series circuits, the battery will last longer. Okay? So basically this 2 volt battery needs to produce 4 volts in order for this to survive. Okay? So, so that's why the lifespan of the battery will be shorter. And also in the parallel circuit, the same electric current flows through each bulb, right? Because 2 volts, 2 volts, 2 volts. So 2 volts of electricity flows through each bulb and thus the bulb actually remains the same brightness. So this bulb is equal to this bulb's same brightness, okay? Next, we have the removal of bulbs. So from 2 bulbs in the series, we remove 1 bulb, we'll get 1 bulb in the series, right? And basically more electricity flows through. It's basically the exact op opposite of the addition of bulbs over here. So basically more electricity flows through the bulb and thus it shines brighter because uh, we don't need to share the, the electricity with two bulbs, right? That's why two volts can go to just one bulb and it will be brighter. And for the parallel, since, uh, since in the parallel circuit, it was already the same brightness. When we take out one bulb, it will still be the same brightness because it's basically we are just taking out one pathway. Out. So basically, over here, we are just going to take out this pathway in order to get this. So 2 volts over here goes 2 volts over here. Instead of 2 volts, 2 volts and 2 volts. Understand that? So I hope you understood that. Now, we have a different thing over here. So the different thing is that the addition of batteries. So batteries uh, added in series is basically uh, so it's basically the complete opposite of bulbs okay so here we have addition of bulbs right and removal of bulbs so adding batteries in series is basically to align them in series and what this does is basically increases electricity flow uh, through each bulb and the bulb shines brighter so if each battery was 2 volts right this will be 4 volts right now and thus the bulb receives 4 volts instead of 2 volts. And thus it becomes brighter. And for the parallel circuit, okay, for the parallel, the same electricity flows through the bulb and thus remains the same brightness. You know why? Because this is one pathway over here and this battery is 2 volts. And this is another pathway over here and this battery is 2 volts. And the bulb only receives 2 volts because of each pathway. Understand? It's basically like this. So, it's basically like this one over here. So, 2 volts of battery goes to one bulb. You get 2 volts for that bulb. And the other bulb also gets 2 volts. But for this, the bulb only gets 2 volts even though there are 2 batteries here. Because it's 2 separate pathways. And that's why the bulb only receives 2 volts. Understand? So, that's why it remains the same brightness. Now, let's move on. So, now we are at the removal of batteries. So, when batteries are removed in series, it will be the basic opposite of the first one we have taught. So, batteries added in series, opposite. So, basically, less electric current flows through the bulb and thus the bulb shines dimmer. 
So from 4 volt, 4 volt to 2 volts. So it's basically dimmer. Okay. Next, for the batteries removed in parallel, there's basically no difference because uh, if this battery was 2 volts and this was 2 volts, the light bulb still only received 2 volts. And, and when we are decreasing the one battery, 2 volts is still going to receive 2 volts, just like the series circuit. Okay? So, I hope you understood that. Now let's move on. Okay, so let me uh, show you a question over here. So this question, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using circuit B to connect the bulbs? Okay, circuit B and circuit A. So as you can see, let me annotate here. So circuit A is actually a series circuit because the, ba the batteries are arranged in series. And circuit B is actually a parallel circuit, okay? because the batteries are arranged in parallel format. Okay, so I hope you understood that. Okay, so it's arranged in parallel. So this bulb is in parallel and this bulb is in parallel. Okay, so basically there are two pathways, right? So this is one pathway. And, and this is another pathway. Okay, so now uh, let me show you the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, first advantage of circuit B is that even with four bulbs, uh, sorry, even with two batteries, the, the batteries, the bulbs actually remain the same brightness. So if this is four volts over here, each bulb will be receiving four volts. And if this is four volts over here, this bulb will receive 2 volts and this bulb will receive 2 volts. So this is an advantage. Okay, next. Okay, so next. In series, you can actually, you can actually uh, switch on the circuit and you will light up two bulbs at the same time. But in parallel, you can switch on one, one switch and it lights up this bulb only because there are two separate pathways, right? And if you... Uh, switch on the switch You will light up this bulb. So actually you can control the lighting up of the bulbs individually Okay, so that's an advantage as well So there are two advantages so ability to control each bulb independently and Another thing will the bulbs light up when one bulb fuses. So Basically, what is fusing of a bulb? So fusing means right? So if this is a bulb So we have the filament here. Okay, wait, sorry, I didn't draw it properly. Okay, so basically, the fusing of a bulb is basically, you see this filament over here? The filament, right? So the filament is actually too hot and it actually melts. And thus, there will be a big gap over here, right? So this gap will actually show an open circuit and it will not light up, right? And this bulb wouldn't light up. So if this bulb, for instance, fuses, will this bulb still light up? Yes, because there are two pathways, right? So this pathway will still allow this bulb to light up. But in series, that's not possible because if this bulb over here fuses, this bulb will not light up as well because it's a one-way train. It's just one pathway. So we can't actually control the control uh, how uh, the bulbs fuse. Okay? So if this bulb fuses, this bulb would not light up because we can't control because there's only one pathway. And for this, we can actually control it because uh, we can switch on this switch and switch on this switch and there are two pathways. So if this actually uh, fuses, this will still light up because there's another pathway uh, for it to light up. Okay, and another thing. So the brightness of the bulbs is, uh, is brighter and this is our advantage as well. And you can control each bulb independently. 
Okay, the last comparison uh, factor. I actually explained it in the next uh, before slide. Basically, it was the lifespan of the batteries. So the lifespan of the batteries in parallel is actually lesser because if this is 4 volts, each of this gets 4 volts, right? Each of the bulbs get 4 volts. And if this is 4 volts, you're actually just sharing 2 volts and 2 volts. While this battery needs to work twice as hard in order to produce enough for both of this. And thus, the battery's lifespan actually decreases. And thus, the battery, we can't... Uh, what do I mean by the, the lifespan of the batteries decreasing is basically that we can't use the batteries for a very long period of time. Instead, we can only use it for a short period of time and we need to change the batteries. Okay? And another thing, you need to know this. Huh? So, you need to know this. So basically, uh, in a house, right, do we have series or parallel? Is related to this fusing part okay do we have series or parallel okay we actually have parallel circuit in our houses because if one of the thing fuses the others will still work so uh, that's this is another advantage so this is basically an advantage of the parallel circuit which I'm explaining with a real-life context okay so first let's write down the advantages and disadvantages of circuit b when it's connected to the bulbs okay first the bulbs connected using circuit b would be brighter okay so basically we are need we need to compare with circuit a okay so we'll be brighter we need to use comparative words like brighter and the bulbs can be controlled independently so there's two advantages in this Next, additionally, when one bulb fuses, there will still be a closed circuit with the other bulbs in circuit B. So, electricity will still be able to flow through the other bulbs, allowing them to light up. Okay? So, this is another advantage. And we still haven't talked about the disadvantage, right? So, let's talk about the disadvantage. So, however, the batteries in circuit B will be used up more quickly and this is a disadvantage okay so i hope you understood that and now let's move on so for the seventh segment of this video i'm going to go through the proper use of electricity so how do we use electricity properly so first electricity can cause electric shocks electrocution fires and burns if used incorrectly so what can we do so so the safety precautions are basically do not poke anything into the electrical power points basically the power sockets you know those do not poke a pen into it do not do those things okay because it can it can cause uh, electric shocks and electrocution okay do not touch electrical appliances when your hands are wet because it can shock you okay do not use electrical appliances that are damaged. They can cause fires or burns. Like if you are charging your phone and your phone charger actually has a the, the outer layer, which is basically the insulation made out of rubber. Basically, uh, if it's uh, worn out, the wires will actually uh, cause electricity and you're charging your phone on your bed or something, right? The electricity will actually go into the bed and the, the bed sheets will actually cause more heat. And this will cause the bed sheets to actually start a fire. Okay? So, uh, you do not want that to happen, right? So, you do not use electrical appliances that are damaged. Do not use wires with broken insulation, like I told just now. And this is, these two are actually related to each other. Okay, next. Get a qualified electrician. Get a qualified electrician to repair your damaged electrical appliances okay so you don't repair it yourself because sometimes you can uh, repair it wrongly and it might actually cause more danger to you okay so i hope you understood that now let's move on okay for the eighth segment of this video i'm going to talk about conserving electricity okay how do we conserve electricity so you need to know that fuels such as coal 
oil or natural gases are actually burnt in power stations to produce electricity. These fuels take a long time to form and cannot last forever. Thus, we need to conserve these fuels. We have to conserve electricity. Okay? So, we are using natural resources like coal, oil, and natural gases, which are burned in power stations, in order to produce electricity. And these are actually non-renewable resources, and these can't last forever. So, these are non renewable okay so what we can do to conserve electricity is to basically switch off lights and electrical appliances when they are not needed use fans instead of air conditioners as they consume more electricity so air conditioners actually consume more electricity than fans so you can use fans instead of air conditioner but if you really need to use air conditioner you can go use it okay so these are just some ways and you can use, ele uh, use energy saving light bulbs okay so these light bulbs actually save uh, energy like use the LED instead of the fluorescent light bulbs okay so these are actually energy saving light bulbs next so next we have the important tips that I'm going to tell you for for electrical system so let's take a look at it and basically the important tips first tip when actual bulbs are drawn in the circuit check the connection of bulbs and wires connected to metal casing and metal tip so i told you many times so if this is a bulb okay so the wires need to be connected to the metal tip metal casing and the metal tip and it needs to be connected there there shouldn't be any gaps in between okay so next always check the direction of batteries when they are actually drawn okay so the batteries over here so if this is a battery in a circuit and then this battery will be over here if this battery is in the wrong direction right so it needs to flow in the negative positive negative positive no this is not negative positive right it's actually positive negative so it is wrong this is positive negative so it is actually wrong it will create an open circuit so what you need to do is to actually align the batteries negative positive and negative positive okay so you need to know that so they, they will they will ask tricky questions like this and, and you need to spot these small, small clues in order to find it. And lastly, when you're answering questions, right, use the term electric current instead of electricity, okay? It's better to use electric current than electricity, but they wouldn't penalize too much for electricity. But it's better to be safe than, yeah, it's better to be safe. So you just use electric current, okay? So how do you use it? You just use it like, electric current flows through the box okay so you can use it like this okay with that I have come to the end of this video and I hope you understood my explanation for electrical system and I hope you have truly understood what I've taught you and thank you and bye bye I'll see you in my next video Bye!